All right, Shalom, another GMS on the go, back with another lesson. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Next, double honors to the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the ones that taught me the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akims. Keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith. Regardless of people here for a bit, I was just sitting back, you know, just thinking about how much of a blessing it is. That we have been allowed to call on the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son's name in the proper Hebrew tongue, man. You know, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. It's a blessing to be able to call on those high holy names, those proper names in the Hebrew tongue, man. You know, those names were taken for, from us for a long time, man. So, so I say that name as much as possible, man. You know, feels good to finally be able to call on someone. That you know is hearing you, you know. Why? Why would you want to call on another God anyway? Why? Why? You haven't given the proper names in the Hebrew tongue of your power's name now. Why not call on your your um, power's name in the Hebrew tongue? Why call on Greek names? You know. Why? Why believing in Greek gods? Why believing in Kemet gods, African gods, and all that other nonsense? You know. You know. Uh, Ishmaelite gods, Moab gods, you believing in the Chinese gods, which are no gods, you believing in the Arab gods, which are no gods, you have the name of your power, man, all right, and it holds weight, so without further ado, let's get into it, without further ado, you know, I ain't going to talk about it no, no more, let's, let's just get into it, if this computer stop acting up, you know, Lord willing, we can get into this lesson. This is Proverbs chapter 18. Bear with me. This computer acting up like hell. Just bear with me, Israel. Proverbs chapter 18. We're going to try to get through this, Lord willing. The name of the Lord. Because remember, I was going into how important that name is and how much of a blessing it is. I mean, you can never do enough lessons on the name of Yahweh by Shemiah Rashad, how powerful it is and how strong it is. You know, every time you turn around, you need to be calling on that name. We, we constantly need Yahweh by Shemiah Rashad. Don't a day go past that we don't need our power, man. Proverbs 18 and 10, the name of the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, who the ignorant call God in Jesus Christ, is a strong tower. All right? Impenetrable. You know? Nothing can penetrate through that tower, man. The righteous run into it, not the wicked. The hopeful elect run into it, and it's safe, man. That name brings safety. All right? Look, the Israelites, they're not pushing that name. You look, you, you in trouble. You showing up in some showing up deep trouble, Israel. If you're not calling on the names of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh, we got the names. Look, you're not going to be able to keep using excuses. We got the name now, right? No more excuses. Psalms. Come on now. This is Psalm chapter 9. Lord willing, we'll get through this, man. Computer, computer ain't never really act like this, man. And I just cleaned it out. Took out all the junk. But hey, look, we're we going to the name of the Lord, so you already know what it is. This is Psalm chapter 9. Starting at verse 9. The Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, will be a refuge. For the oppressed. Who's the oppressed? Negroes, Latinos, and Native American is, man. All right? Let's look up that matter of fact. Let's look up that definition. Say the Lord shall be a refuge, right? Let's get that. Let's get that definition right quick. Refuge. Come on now. I got that definition. I want to go back um to that scripture right quick. This is Psalms chapter nine. We we'll start at nine once again. The Lord, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh also will be a refuge for the oppressed. Now we got the definition for the word refuge. Refuge. Let's blow it up some. Refuge. It's a noun, a condition of being safe. Call on the name of the Lord. Running to the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh keeps you safe. 
a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit pursuit. Someone's chasing after you. What you do? Calling the name of your house, but Shemeshah, when Pharaoh was chasing Moses and the Israelites, and they was going through the sea. What was they doing? Calling on the name of your house, but Shemeshah, because the enemy was in pursuit of them. Danger or trouble. You know? Something providing shelter. Look, look, protection, safety. Calling in the name of your your house, but Shemeshah brings you protection, man. You know, safekeeping. You know? Safe house, safe haven, you know, hiding place, hiding place, you know, that's the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. It says a refuge, let's get it, a refuge in times of trouble. Are we, are we living in troubling times? Are we? And listen, listen to this, Israel. And they that know thy name, we know the names of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. You see, we're putting our trust in the name of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee, man. You know, Yahweh by Shemiah Shai has not forsaken the Israelites that called upon him. Remember, going right back to Sarah. Well, right back to Sirach chapter 2, verse 10. Look at the generations of old and see that ever any call on the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai was forsaken. Because remember, the Lord our power is a jealous power. I want to get that right quick. I want to get that. Exodus. You got Israel calling on the name of these other gods. What the Lord say? Uh, let's see. Is that it? 20? Exodus 20. Salakia. Let's get Exodus 20, and I come back to 23. Exodus chapter 20. We'll start at 1. We'll read down a little bit. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. And Yahweh by Shem Yahushua spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Who brought us out of the house of bondage? Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, not Buddha, not Allah, not Santa Maria, not your mama, not your daddy. All right? Not Sejere, all right? Not the so-called white man. They didn't bring us out of the house of bondage, all right? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai did. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, right? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. Our people are worshiping rocks, you know, wood, stone, you name it, man. The Lord said don't do that. Or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I am the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, thy power, am a jealous power. Visiting the iniquity. Damn right, Yahweh Bashim Yahushua got the right to be jealous. He created us. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children until the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Because that's when you come back. Every third and fourth generation, look, receiving your judgment. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and that keep my commandments, man. All right? You know? Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, thy power in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain, man. All right? And you got Israelites to know the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. But look, they're taking the name in vain. You know? Taking it for light. But that's that's Israel's mo, though. You know, been trusting in the name of these false gods. Let's get this. Still in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter twenty-three, verse thirteen. And in all things that I have said, see this computer acting up. And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, looking around. Watch what's going on. Look, and make no mention of the name of other gods. See, we let you know who these other gods are, but look, we're not worshiping them. See, when it's going to say that making mention of the name of other gods is going to worshiping them. Because we got to say those other gods' names to let our people know who not to worship. So, so this right here is going to say, don't worship these other gods. You know? 
Buddha, Allah, Santa Maria, the Hindu goddess Shiva, the Kemet gods, you know, all the above. Make no mention of the name of, of the other gods. Neither let it be heard out of thy mouth, man. All right? But, but Israel, uh, we're here to, look, they of the circumcision, where well, read the scripture, they didn't read, you think they ain't read Exodus, the 23rd chapter? Yeah, they read Exodus, the 23rd chapter. Look, they're not listening. They, look, Israel is not listening, man. Yahweh by Shemel Shasala, I'm a jealous power now. Let's get second Ezra's. Yahweh by Shemel Shasala, I'm a jealous power. I'm going to visit you sooner or later. If, if you keep playing around with my name, I'm going to visit you sooner or later. Second Ezra chapter 2. Verse, uh, and then this is a short little lesson, man. I was just sitting back thinking. And the Lord was like, yo, I, I was just thinking about, about how powerful the name of Yahweh by Shemel Shai is, man. And the Lord was like, yo, yo, do, do something to my name then. Let's see. Bear with me. Let me see, Israel. Bear with me. This right here. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 42. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Sion people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon each one of their heads he said, Crowns! And was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? And he answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on immortality, man, and have confessed the name of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. Now are they crowned and receive palms, right? Then said I to the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them psalms in their hands. So he answered and said unto me, It is the son of Yahweh, whom they have confessed in the world. You meaning we're confessing Lord Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Now we ain't got to wait until we get into the kingdom. All right? They confessed him in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. That strong tower, man. All right? As was commended the elect of the nation of Israel for standing so stiffly, man. That 144,000 Israelite men, the prophets that was getting crowned by Lord Yahweh Shai Ezra marveled at it. He can, he look, look, he, he stood so stiffly. He commended them that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh by Shem Shai. So you see how important it is, man? You know? See how important it is to confess the name of Yahweh by Shem Shai? And my computer was acting up the whole time, so Salakia, if the lesson kept stopping and things of that nature, you know, we do what we got to do through the Spirit. This is Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Verse 12, we'll read this. Neither is there salvation any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Okay? So, so you ain't being saved by calling on Allah. Allah is not going to save you. Buddha is not going to save you. The new Kemet gods, Amin Ra, and all them hotel, you know, horse, and all that other nonsense. Look, look, man, you're not going to get saved calling on those names. Those names don't hold no weight. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, all right? So it is what it is, man. This man cried and the Lord heard him. Why? Because he was calling on the name of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, and look, and delivered them out of all his troubles, right? Out of all of their troubles, you get to call on the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. It's a commandment. It's, look, it's too late in the game. They'll be playing around. Matter of fact, let's get one more and then I'm going to wrap it up. Let's get St. John. I'm going to wrap it up after this. St. John 17. So we ain't going to get the name of the Heavenly Father or His only begotten Son until we get in the kingdom. Shut the hell up. 
We don't want to hear that no more, man. All right? We don't want to hear it no more. This is St. John chapter 17. Verse, um, we'll start at 6. St. John chapter 17, verse 6. Read, let a lawyer, how shall I speak of who the English call Jesus? I have manifest, which the word manifest means to make known. I have manifest thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. So we got the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh by Shemuel Rashad. Thine they were, and thou gavest me them, and they have kept thy word, man. All right? So Lord willing, the elect of the nation of Israel was edified, man. Remember, the name of the Lord, you know what I'm saying? Look, it's a strong tower. It's a, it's a place of refuge. Let's get that definition again, a refuge. As soon as this computer stop acting the hell up, they go refuge again. Listen, refuge, a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble in some deadly serious times of fastly approaching. So look, always remember the name of Yahweh by Shemuel Shai. No matter what, man, don't let nobody tell you that we don't have the names, all right? Those that believe in the name of Yahweh, Bashim Yahshah, true seed, man. All right? Re remember, the Lord is jealous now. It it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. Shalom.